Hi, my name is Brian Miller, and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for CMS and for our ITAM space in HP Software. And today we've got Mike Grange with us and Daniel Galecki, and we're here to talk about software license optimization with HP Software. Mike, you want to introduce yourself? Great. Thanks, Brian. So uh, I'm Mike Grange. I'm the uh, Product Manager for HP Asset Management, uh, focusing in on the SAM module portion of uh, Asset Management. Daniel? My name is Daniel Galecki. I'm the Product Manager for Asset Manager, and uh, my primary focus is around cloud. Great. Thanks, guys. Hey, so one of the questions that we wanted to talk about today was how HP products within the ITAM and SAM space bring value for customers in optimizing their software technology. Um, Mike, you want to take a stab at that? Give us your perspective? Sure. Thanks. I'll give that a, a go. So, I mean, today customers are using the HP Asset Management product. They can use that product to manage the application usage across the uh, software and hardware lifecycle. So, I mean, overall, it gives them the ability to reduce costs, decrease risk, uh, increase operational efficiencies. Um, you know, with all that in mind, you you know, you, you can play the, the governance play, which, uh, uh, you know, lets you look at the consumption, your consumption strategy, uh, your procurement uh, supplier models that you're using, so you can make adjustments to those. Uh, and at the end of the day, looking at, uh, you know, your, your software that you're, um, you know, you've procured and you have deployed your entitlements to those, uh, looking at that from a compliance and optimization standpoint. Um, so there, there's a lot of benefits that can be realized from uh, HP Asset Management, Software Asset Management module. All right. Thanks, Mike. So another question, why are organizations going through such unnecessary pain um, with regards to reconciling their software licensing? I mean, why is, it, why is this happening in your opinion? Well, I mean, there's a lot of factors today in the industry that are driving this. And, you know, one, you could look at it being that, uh, you know, from the, the software publisher standpoint, there's an increased focus on uh, audits. And, uh, you know, within North America, there's been a huge increase on those. And we're going to see an even bigger increase into the EMEA and the uh, Asia uh, areas, um, as those areas haven't really been targeted for audits. So, um, you know, the, the, the publishers today are looking at ways to make up, uh, you know, revenues. Um, and, you know, they have this acknowledgement that, you know, a lot of customers really don't know how they've got their software titles or their software deployed and how they're using it. And there's a lot of factors that come into play, you know, whether it's the, you know, the way they provision the software, uh, the way they have uh, education or um, uh, processes around, you know, enabling uh, option packs, um, or even deploying, say, Microsoft Office. You know, they, some companies just allow you know employees to just deploy as they wish. Um, and then there's the other factors too: is uh, virtualization and clouds really come in, and that's a real tough area for customers today to understand the licensing impacts within those environments, especially if you've got situations where, you know, you can have a software title deploy, deployed on a an ESX server, uh, I mean, there could be a problem with that ESX server. VMotion could move that application over to another ESX server. It could have twice as many cores on it. But at the end of the day, does the customer really uh, realize the, the impact that has happened there? Or do they really understand what has happened? Uh, so that's been another uh, challenge customers are facing. It's really getting a grasp of you know, what they have in their environment, uh, not from just the software, but from a hardware uh, uh, virtualized and cloud standpoint so that they can make better decisions on their uh, licensing. All right, thanks. You know, you mentioned cloud, and I want to get to that point here in a couple seconds, but before we do, I want to uh, ask Daniel a question. So what are some of the drivers or reasons a vendor might um, uh, audit software licensing for a customer if they were to face one in 2014? What are some of the drivers behind when that happens? Uh, I mean, it's a great question, uh, Brian. Uh, so there are a number of reasons, um, and if you look at a history of auditing, auditing was uh, something that was fairly rare up until 2008. So that's when we had the big market crash, um, and suddenly we went from uh, a continuous growth to sort of stagnating uh, revenues. And software companies have been used to being a growth industry, and, and, and suddenly they started seeing their revenues flatten 
Um, and uh, they started looking for new ways of uh, making up uh, revenues. And, and one of the things that they've noticed is uh, that they were able to actually do audits uh, for compliance and uh, use that as, uh, as a way to uh, drive additional revenues. And if you actually look at a lot of uh, software vendors, um, the uh, audit teams are actually uh, revenue centers. So they're not doing it to, uh, uh, to ensure compliance and, and just make sure that uh, customer contracts are, uh, uh, are, are proper and, and, and the usage is, is uh, within the limits, but it's actually a revenue center. So it's a source of revenues for, uh, for those companies. Okay, thank you. Good clarification on that topic. I, I, can I add on to that there, Brian? Go for it. Sure. Yeah. So that was that was a good comment, uh, Daniel. Also, like to add that um, I mean, today, sixty percent of our customers are going to be expected to be audited this year alone. Uh, so I mean, that's quite significant. And you know, to add to Daniel's comment about uh, you know the software vendors looking for revenue streams from this, and uh, you know, we've seen reports where certain vendors are you know this is making up thirty percent of the revenue is uh, from audits. So it's quite significant for some software vendors out there to uh, go down this path. Thank you. Thanks for adding some input on that. One more for Daniel, and then we're going to have to cut it off. Um, with all of the current trends in the cloud, both public and private, how does software asset management play exactly in this space, Daniel? Can you clarify? Sure. So Mike, uh, Mike already alluded that uh, uh, if you try to use your software in virtualization, uh, you may find that uh, uh, your compliance is much more complex. Uh, so cloud is bringing in another layer of, of complexity and, and more choices. And what we're seeing is that uh, uh, companies, uh, the, the software vendors uh, licensing terms haven't really caught up to the cloud yet. Uh, what, uh, what we're seeing today is uh, situations where, uh, uh, where software is licensed uh, in, in license terms are written around uh, installation on a piece of hardware. And, uh, um, and, and that software is being put into virtual environments, it's being put into uh, public cloud environments, so it's used in all different ways. Um, an example that, uh, that Mike was, uh, uh, actually an example that we like to use is uh, Oracle Database, very commonly used enterprise uh, software. If you install it in your own environment, if you install it in a virtual machine, you simply need to know the number of cores on that uh, physical machine. If you install it in a virtual environment, so private cloud environment, or, or simply just virtualized machine, you need to know the number of cores on a piece of hardware you installed it to, um, or a number of cores that are within the virtual machine, depending on a specific uh, uh, virtualization technology that you're using. So it gets much more complex. You don't know out of the box how you're going to have to count it. If you go to public cloud, well, again, how do you report how many how many licenses you're consuming? So if you're on Amazon cloud, Oracle actually has an agreement with Amazon, so users can then uh, simply count the number of virtual cores uh, within the uh, the virtual machine uh, that they're using on Amazon. So it can be very complex. I think uh, you're going to see licensing terms evolving over the next. Uh, probably three to five years in order to uh, to meet the realities of, uh, of the cloud. And I think I think that will have a significant impact on software asset management. Okay. Excellent. Thank you for sharing all the information today, both of you. So um, we need to close out this Google session and our Hangout. You can get more information on the subject today by going out to our ITAM, our IT Asset Management webpage. We also have a IT Asset Management blog where you can read more from Daniel, from Mike, and from myself, and thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Thank you.